So why shouldn't everybody with severe aortic stenosis undergo a TAVR procedure instead of a surgical aortic valve replacement? It's easier, it's less invasive, less difficult for the patient. So what's the downside? Now, this has always been a topic of discussion, but more so lately after recent analysis showed that half of patients under the age of 60 are actually undergoing TAVR in the United States instead of SAVR or surgery. And as an interventional cardiologist, this is alarming to me too. And here's why this is an issue. The issue here comes down to lifetime management of severe aortic stenosis, which means we need to think about more than just this particular procedure and getting the patient through this episode, but we have to think about what's gonna happen down the line if and when that valve fails and needs to be replaced again. And for younger folks, especially patients in their 50s and 60s, they may need a second TAVR, maybe even a third TAVR. And that's not always straightforward. Now here's a model of the heart and the aortic valve sits right here. This is your aorta. When we're planning a TAVR, we look at a lot of things, particularly the coronary arteries. If you notice, the coronary arteries that supply blood flow to the heart come off right above where your aortic valve sits. So when we plan a TAVR, we gotta make sure that when that valve goes in, that these coronary arteries are gonna be accessible and they're not gonna shut down on us. So this, for example, is a Medtronic valve. This placed in here, we gotta make sure the geometry can accommodate this particular valve. Now here's a model of the Edwards valve. You can see the frame is much shorter and a little bit more forgiving when it comes to dealing with the coronary arteries, which can sometimes be right above, but in some cases, those can also be borderline or a little bit low. And um, when we think about doing a second valve in here, for example, that could still become a problem. So let's say this patient has a prior tavern and we want to put a second valve in because it deteriorated. When that valve goes in, you can see a couple of things. Number one, it's a lot more crowded in there, right? Even if you were gonna put another Sapien valve inside of this, for example, it's gonna be more hardware and it's gonna potentially make your orifice a little bit smaller. Secondly, the coronary arteries, again, could get unhappy the second time around because now you have more second set of leaflets from the old TAVR valve that have to be pushed to the side and that could potentially risk, again, obstructing the coronary arteries. And you could also potentially sequester the coronary arteries, meaning they may not occlude, but getting in to the arteries afterwards could become a challenge. Now, in some hearts, if there's a lot of room in there, a lot of space, those patients are probably gonna be fine when it comes to getting a second TAVR, maybe even a third TAVR. But there are a lot of folks where it could be pretty snug in there and there's not a lot of space. We also don't know which valve is gonna be better for younger people. Everything has pros and cons. The Medtronic valve, for example, may have better valve area when it goes in and there's a chance it may last longer for the patient. However, there's also more metal in there, more hardware and in certain anatomies that may become an issue later on. The Edwards valve, again, is lower profile. So in certain anatomies, that may be more forgiving when it comes to um, accessing the coronary arteries and potentially accommodating a second valve. However, um, there's a sense that the valve areas are gonna be smaller and maybe that valve will last less than the Medtronic valve. Again, we don't know the answers to this right now. We only have four and five year data for the low risk patient subsets, which is you know, gonna be our young people. So we're probably not gonna know the answer to that in about 10 years. So in the meantime, uh, I think we have to be cautious in making decisions on um, what type of procedure and valves to do in younger folks. Now we have surgical valves that are actually designed to accommodate a future TAVR. We already do TAVR and old surgical valves, but now they've designed valves specifically for this purpose, which could offer a benefit um, when we're doing that second TAVR in the old surgical valve. And finally, there's an argument saying, hey, when I'm young, give me my TAVR so I can still be active, play golf and do all the things I wanna do. And then my second procedure, do a surgery, take this out and put a surgical valve in. That does sound attractive. However, we've also learned taking out these TAVR valves may not be as easy as we once thought. So we still got a lot to learn in that realm as well. So again, these are some of the issues that we think about and your cardiologist should be thinking about if you're a young person being offered TAVR. Uh, we still have a lot to learn, but again, it's not always as simple as give me the easier procedure um, and deal with the rest down the line. Food for thought.